Welcome to our lecture online. On the previous video, we saw how to solve, or not really solve, but how to evaluate a determinant. So now we're going to use that technique to solve a system of linear equations in three variables. Notice I colored the constants of the right of equal sign in blue because there's a relation between this and the determinants that we set up. Notice there are four determinants that we need to evaluate. And when we finish evaluating these determinants, notice we can then find the value for x, y, and z, the three variables in our system of linear equations. We can figure out what these are equal to by dividing d sub x by d, d sub y by d, and d sub z divided by d. Notice the d determinant is simply this determinant right here. The numbers are obtained by taking the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables in our three equations by plopping them in there. Then we repeat that in those three other determinants with the one exception that for the d sub x, instead of writing the first column as 1, 5, and 3, we're going to replace them by these three numbers, 9, 3, and negative 1. We're going to take those and replace 1, 5, and 3 by 9, 3, and negative 1. Then we restore those three numbers to 1, 5, and 3, and then for d sub y, we take the very same three numbers and place them in the middle column. And then for the d sub z, again, we restore these three numbers to the original, negative 1, 3, and 7, and now we're going to take these three numbers and we plop them down in the third column. And that's how we'll find d sub x, d sub y, and d sub z. We're going to divide all three of these numbers because, again, remember, when you evaluate a determinant, you get a single number. Then you divide each of these results by this, the number you get from here, and that will give you the values for x, y, and z that satisfy that system of linear equations. So now we have to remember how to evaluate the determinant. Remember the signs. Remember that this was a plus, a minus, and a plus. So always remember that this is plus, minus, plus. Okay, starting out, we take the first number, 1, and we multiply that times the product. Now remember, we're going to cover this column and this row, so you end up with these four numbers right here. So you're going to multiply these two numbers, 3 times 4, and subtract from that the product of these two numbers. Now notice there's a negative 6 there, times 7. So it's this number times the mini determinant of this, which is this number times this number minus this number times this number. Then we go minus the middle number here, which is a minus 1. So make sure you get the signs correct. That's very important. And then we're going to multiply that times. Now notice you're going to cover this column and this row up, so you end up with these four numbers right here. So it's 5 times 4 minus the product of these two numbers, which is minus 6 times 3. And now finally, we take the third number, the 4 right here, so that will be plus 4 because it's plus minus plus, plus 4 times. Again, you're going to cover this column and this row, so you end up with those four numbers, 5 times 7, minus the product of these two numbers, which is 3 times 3 just like we did in the previous video. Now let's evaluate this and see what we get. So this is equal to 1 times, this is 12 minus times minus, which is plus, so that will be 12 plus 42, minus times a minus, which is plus 1, times 20 minus times a minus is plus, so plus 18, and then we have plus 4 times 35, minus 9. And of course, then we need to simplify that. I'm kind of running out of room a little bit, so let me go ahead and um, hmm, I'm going to put this equal sign a little bit lower. So here, 12 plus 42, that's 54. So 1 times 54 plus 1 times 38 plus 4 times 35 minus 9 is 26. So this is equal to 54 plus 38, plus 104, and that's 92, that's 96, that would be equal to 196. So that means that the determinant D, when I evaluate it, I get the number 196. 
which means if I'm going to evaluate x, y, and z, or find the values for x, y, and z, I get x is equal to some number divided by 196, y is going to be equal to some number divided by 196, and z is going to be some number divided by 196. So that's how we find x, y, and z. I've already got the denominator, now I need to know the three numerators. Okay, well, to do that, I need to evaluate this determinant. And as you can tell, we need a lot of room for these. So we want to make sure that we don't get confused here. So here, that's all for the D determinant. Now we're going to evaluate this one. We do the same process. We take the upper number right here, which is 9, and we multiply it times. Let me show you again. We're going to cover this one and cover this one. And so have these four numbers left. So it's going to be 3 times 4 minus a minus 6 times 7. So again, it's the product of these two minus the product of those two. Then I grab the negative of this number, so it's going to be minus negative 1 times. So when I cover this up and this up, I'm left with those four numbers. 3 times 4 minus negative 6 times negative 1. Like so. And then I take the last number, 4, so that would be plus 4 because it went plus minus plus 4 times. I cover this column and this row and end up with these four numbers right there. 3 times 7 minus 3 times negative 1. Like this. And now I simplify that. So I get 9 times 12 plus 42, so that's 12 minus times minus is plus 42. That would be uh, 42 plus 12 is 54. Minus times minus, which is plus 1, times 12. Now I have a minus times a minus times a minus. Well, that's a minus. So 12 minus 6 is 6. So that ends up being a 6. And then finally, plus 4 times 21 minus times a minus is plus, plus 3. That would be 24. Okay, uh, so I need to combine that. 9 times 54. 10 times 54 is 540. That would be uh, 486. So this would be equal to 486 plus 6 plus 96. I'm going to grab a calculator just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So 9 times 54 is indeed 486 plus 6 plus 96. That gives me 588. And remember, that was equal to d sub x. So when d sub x is 588, that goes in the numerator here. And 196 goes into 588 exactly three times, which means x equals 3. It almost works like magic. Now we'll do the next two. All right, so now we're going to evaluate this one. I'm going to draw a line just so we don't get too confused because I don't have enough board space, it looks like. But now we're going to evaluate this one. So we take the top left number, 1, times the product of those two minus the product of those two. So that would be 3 times 4 minus a negative 6 times a negative 1. So notice again, we're multiplying this diagonal and subtracting the product of that diagonal. So now it's going to be plus minus the middle number, so minus 9 times, cover these up, so I get those four numbers, 5 times 4 minus negative 6 times 3. Okay, and now the last number, which is negative, that's plus minus plus 4 times, if I cover this column and this row, I end up with those four numbers, 5 times negative 1 minus 3 times 3. Uh, 3 times 3, like this. Okay, so now I have to simplify that. So I have 1 times 12 minus times a minus times a minus. Well, that's a negative, so 12 minus 6 is 6, so we get 1 times 6. Here we get minus 9 times 20 plus 18, that would be 38 plus 4 times minus 5 minus 9, that would be minus 14. OK, 
Okay, so this is equal to 6 minus, whew, big numbers, 38, 38 times 9, that's 342, so minus 342, and that would be minus 56, so that would be uh, plus 56, that would be minus 6, that would be minus 392. Okay, and remember what that was equal to, that is d sub y, so d sub y goes up in here, so that's what this number is minus 392 and of course that means that y is equal to a negative 2. Isn't it just like magic? I love this technique. It takes a lot of work. It's probably longer of a technique than the others that we've learned so far, method 1 and method 2, but it's just so nice when it just comes out just perfect like that. Okay, one more determinant. So we take the top number, put my calculator down, so that gives me 1 times so we covered this row and that column, we had those four numbers. So it would be 3 times negative 1 minus 3 times 7. Next, the negative of that number. So minus and minus 1. Because remember, we go plus, minus, plus on the signs when we do this. So this negative and negative 1. And if we cover this row and that column, we end up with those four numbers. So it would be 5 times negative 1 minus 3 times 3. Okay, so it would be 5 times negative 1 minus 3 times 3. And finally, we got plus 9. And I cover this row and that column and end up with those four numbers. So 5 times 7 minus 3 times 3. Okay, I guess brackets work a little bit better. Makes it clearer, doesn't it? Instead of parentheses like that. Okay, so let's simplify that and see what we get. So this is equal to 1 times. This is a negative 3 minus 21, that would be minus 24. Minus times the minus is plus, so that would be plus 1. Oop, let me go like this. Plus 1 times, that's a negative 5 minus 9, that's minus 5 minus 9, that's minus 14. And then plus 9, and here we get 35 minus 9, which is 26. Okay, so this gives me uh, a negative 24 a negative 14, and a plus, that's 260, 230, that would be 234, that would be 220, that would be 196. Okay, so 196, remember, 196 was equal to d sub z. I better put a little line in there, so that's this. So d sub z is 196, that goes right in here for d sub z, 196, and of course, 196 divided by 196, z is equal to 1. And there you go. That is how we use Kramer's rule, or the method of determinants, to find the x, the y, and the z values that satisfy those three equations and three unknowns, that system of linear equations and three variables. I think it's a great method. It takes a while. You may not like it because there's so much arithmetic in there, but remember, in the end, it will always work for any sort of system of linear equations like that. And it's actually quite a beautiful way. And that is how it's done. It works better if you're a computer. Yes, a computer does marvelous with this. Or Excel spreadsheets. I use the word Excel spreadsheets a lot. But it works like a charm. <laughs> that is true. If you make one little mistake somewhere, and as you can tell, that would be rather easy to do. The numbers are not going to come out. Yes, you cannot make one little mistake or it's history. And that's, as you can tell, one little mistake, one little sign, one little number anywhere. But yeah, you got to be slow and careful. I still make mistakes. <laughs> I do too. <laughs>